It is an achievement that continues to be celebrated. Because I had two A's, a B and a D. At both individual, national and international levels. I really want to thank God um, for keeping me. Isabella Epiu. The same achievement coming with a smile on many people's faces, including her own. So getting into medicine and getting the government scholarship, it was really straightforward. 37 years ago, the family of Pastor Dr. Richard Epiu in the present Daingora district was blessed with an addition in the birth of Isabella Epiu. The new family member would grow to bring more happiness. The journey to holding a PhD began during her days in primary school. I'm actually born in Jinja Hospital and uh, had a lot of my primary education in Jinja. So I completed from Victoria Nile Primary School where I excelled as one of the best girls in the district with a four. I made it to Gayaza High School and uh, there I spent six years and um, it opened doors for me to get a government scholarship to Makere University and uh, that's when I started my journey as a medical doctor. Becoming a medical professional did not come out of the blue. It was as a result of childhood dreams, passion and love for humanity. Maths and physics were my best subjects and then I had to kind of put extra effort into biology and chemistry because I wanted to, to go into the line of medicine. So it was interesting that um, I had to take this combination of uh, physics, chemistry, maths and biology. It was very hard, but excitingly, by the end, I excelled and I was able to get my government scholarship at Makere. Passion and focus are some other things that have enabled her overcome temptations. My dad always talked about passing with flying colors. Um, when I came back from Gayaza and I was the eighth in the class, he was not happy <laughs> to him. I needed to be the first in the class. So that was a, a lot of pressure on me to, to, to excel and to keep doing better. Um, I think they were happy with the medical line. I've not heard him say maybe you should have done this or done that. So they were supportive and they were happy with the medical line. It is an academic journey that has seen her specialize in neurorespiratory physiology and health economics. You know, medicine is not easy. <laughs> like your first few weeks, you go into this room and there are cadavers, you know, you have to start um, dissecting them and all that. So some students really get scared because that's your first exposure to medicine. Some students even drop out, some collapse at that stage. But yeah, we, we, we encourage each other as a group. We learned the anatomy, learned all the basic sciences, and we got through. Eventually, I, I finished my medicine program in 2009, and I opted to do my internship in Soroti Hospital. Uh, medicine was in Makere in Mulago, so I spent five good years at the Makere Hill. I was in Africa Hall at that time, so crossing Katanga. We used to walk every day and, you know, get through with the program. So it was very successful. Dr. Isabella is a holder of numerous accolades from renowned global medical societies and institutions. President Yoweri Museveni has always appreciated her for exceptional research contributions. I must say, with the advocacy, I've seen so many changes. I mean, Mulago has now been uplifted. We have now new equipment. We have the regional referral hospitals having um, uh, ICUs now. Really thank government for this investment in equipment and surgery. They are continuing to sponsor more students in anesthesia, in surgery. These are steps that I really, really am grateful to government for, one, for my scholarship, but for all the other investments that they've done in health. The concern of brain drain is alive in her mind, to which she wants more government support towards scientists. I'm hoping that I can get to a point where I can actually 
use all the skills that I've gained. I mean, right now, as the first anesthesiologist in Uganda with a PhD, and then the first female in East Africa that we are aware of, um, there's a lot that we can do. The reason I came back from Australia was that we can train more PhDs here. We can increase research capacity here. We can do the groundbreaking research that I've learned out there and we can implement them here. At 37, marriage is not her priority. <laughs> and this is why. Investing in education, it's a very, very difficult journey. But you just keep like, you know what? Let me just finish. Maybe it's light at the end. You know, you just keep having that grit and, and support from mentors and all that. So now that I'm done, I'm sure I will we'll come to those other chapters of my life. All these achievements have been as a result of inspirations with some role models present in the picture. Uh, Professor Harriet Mayanja, um, a professor of medicine at uh, Makere. She was my mentor also for the University of California Fellowship. Uh, she came in at a time when I had finished uh, all this research in East Africa, and then now I was starting another big research with her ab about the 64 hospitals in Uganda. And so I had a whole thesis, and I was like, how do I make this into a publication, you know? Um, if I send it as it's too big, you know, so she helped me. We broke it down. I got my first publication. I got the second. I got the third, you know. So it's, she's one person that I will really, really remember all my life. Dr. Epiu envisions leveraging advanced technology and specialized training to reduce reliance on international medical care. This, she says, will curb medical tourism and strengthen Uganda's health care system. And right now, I mean, in our environment, the president is promoting sciences. So this is the best time to have your child excel in sciences in our community. But in all these fields, children can really excel in everything they, they set out to do. Her accomplishments stand as a testament to perseverance and innovation. She sees serious potential for transformative change within the healthcare landscape of East Africa. Hallelujah. Henry Okrut, UBC.